James Lance plays Trent Krim in Ted Lasso, the Emmy award-winning comedy, I'm Matt Noble, a gold derby. And I wanted to start off by asking you, James, Trent's all about writing stories. What's the story of Trent Krim? Ooh, what's the story of Trent Krim? Wow, that's going in. You mean his backstory? Do you mean no, I mean, past? like, what? I think, what would you say is the overriding story for him over the three seasons of the show gotcha. that we've seen? Emancipation. Yeah. Yeah, Elab- I think it's... Elaborate. <laughs> I think I think that um, Trent uh, at the beginning isn't who he isn't living the life he wants to live. He isn't being the person he really truly is. He's become uh, his kind of um, his defenses uh, have become his behaviour. Um, hence that kind of cynical, hard exterior that we first meet, and now where we are. Uh, at this point in season three, we're starting to see the real trend, um, which, um, you know, is, is is really due to the fact that he is now in a, in a safe environment. You know, he's in that loving, supportive, uh, positive uh, environment. And um, this is new for him. In fact, this is the first time that's ever really occurred. And, you know, inevitably, when you're surrounded by you know, for want of another phrase, the lasso way, um, things change for people. And um, Trent's been on a, on a journey of change right from the beginning, as, as have a lot of people in the show. Um, so really, I would say in answer to your question, his story is really all about change. But everything changes, right? People change. And one thing I love about Trent is that he is able to change, you know, because some people are kind of stuck in their ways. And what's great about playing him is there's, a sort of unpredictability about him. You're never quite sure if he's going to do the right thing or, or or not. You know, so um, yeah, it's about it's about the change. And like, how has this experience of you being on the show changed you, James? Um. Wow, how has it changed? You? It's been really, really uh, fun to play a lot of comedy. I love comedy. I believe in it deeply. And um, I think it has healing qualities for real. And um, there was a point when at the beginning of the season one where I was quietly berating myself for not creating the kind of comedy that I really want to see. And then I uh, I sort of had a word with myself. I said, oh, well, hold on a second. You are actually in the comedy that you want to see. Like Jason and those guys, they're taking care of it. Um, so maybe just do your job right now, Jimmy. <laughs> so, you know, I, uh, I, uh, and then I just kind of let myself, um, relax into this amazing opportunity. I mean, three seasons to grow a character with all of these phenomenal, uh, players and, you know, in every department as well, not just on screen, you know, we've got some incredible, incredible directors working with us. I love the collaboration. I adore it. I love walking on set and sort of saying, you know, what do you need? Obviously, I come with my, um, you know, with my with my thoughts and, and I do my work, most of it sort of off, off set. But then I like to just arrive and see what's, see what's required, see what, you know, see what's happening. I love that element. It's kind of like live theatre working on Ted Lasso. Because as you may have heard from others, the script changes a lot. And even if you get a rewrite the night before, very often it will be rewritten in the morning and then very often it will be rewritten on actually on set. And I personally love that. I just love it. I love the fresh live element of it. Oh, that's so cool. And you said you just love like comedy and that's like something that you think is really important. Is there a particular like comedy you grew up watching, like a particular like sort of comedic sensibility or something that just inspired you with comedy? Yeah, I would say, I mean, you know, Mork and Mindy, Robin, Robin, Robin Williams. I mean, I, is that a comedy? I'm assuming it's yes. It make, yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's definitely a comedy. <laughs> it used to make me laugh a lot. Um, just seeing that uh, exuberant, effervescent, uh, sort of wild um, nature of Robin Williams as that character just you know, fired me up when I was a child living in the middle of nowhere in Somerset in, in the UK. And then equally, you know, I love those shows. I love American comedies, always have done. I mean, I used to think The Fonz in Happy Days was just, 
I mean, he was just my hero. I had the jacket, the white T-shirt, the jeans. You know, I was like four years old, <laughs> rocking around like fun. But there was something about his delivery and his warmth that I just found so funny. Um, yeah, you know, all of these things feed in. I mean, I, there's so many, I, there's so many comedies. I love. I mean, Cheers is an absolute classic. Love Cheers. Frasier, incredible. One of the best spin-offs of all time, surely. Um, you know, on on it goes. I uh, yeah. There's so many. There's too many. There's too many to um, mention, really. And, and what is a moment? Maybe from this third season, but you can go anywhere you like, um, James. What is a moment of like just comedy that you got to take a part in and be in um, in ten or so? <laughs> okay, I think my favorite moment is coming up. Um, I think it's in the next episode, so I can't give a spoiler on that. But there's a whole there's a whole scene that occurs where very little dialogue happens, and uh, we all we're all <laughs> looking at each other, and a whole sort of conversation uh, occurs without anything really being said, and yet everything is being said. And I, when I saw it, because I did some ADR for it you know, uh, additional dubbed recording for those who don't know. Um, and um, it, very little was required because there wasn't any um, uh, uh, dialogue, but there were a couple of noises. And um, it, it was one of the funniest things I've seen in the show so far. So that's one. I also have to say, I don't know what it is. Well, I do, it's the delivery that Brett Goldstein um, has when we're talking about our favorite Julie Andrews uh, character and Trent says his, and um, uh, <laughs> Roy Kent just says, fuck yeah. And what does he say? He says, um, fuck yeah, Princess Diaries. <laughs> I, I still, that still makes me laugh. Like if I, if I see something that I really like, you know, I would just say to myself in my best innermost Roy, fuck yeah, <laughs> Princess Diaries. I love it. Like it's so interesting thinking about Trent and the change that he's gone on for season mm. three. You've got an Emmy nomination for best guest actor last year for the role. Now you've been moved yeah. up to supporting and on like a similar trajectory, uh, Trent last season, like has gone from sort of a bit of a bit character to part of the team and in there with the locker room sure. with them. And you have that great scene in season one that people always go to the dartboard scene where he talks about judgment, versus curiosity, the Walt Whitman quote. And Trent really is an embodiment of going from the judgmental critic to the person just so curious about what's going on with this team. And how do you sort of this season being in there play that curiosity? Well, that curiosity is uh, is actually inherent. It's innate in Trent Krim mm. as a journalist. He's a, he really is an investigative journalist, I believe, mm. through and through. And... Um, even though when we first meet him, he's very judgmental on, uh, on on Ted, he's also he's also really curious. I mean, you know, when he says that, you know, he says is this a, you know epping joke? Um, there is curiosity in that. It's like, how did this happen? You know, he wants to know uh, how this has even occurred, and um, so so the curiosity is always there within him. But I think what has sort of um phase is phasing out is the judgmentalism mm. judgmentalism yeah we'll go with it yeah well, let's go with that judgmentalism i guess it is kind of mental um and um that, that that's you know that's kind of evaporating mm. um it's that funny thing isn't it i think where you know when you've been judged so like like a lot of us you know we've all been judged in our in our lives and Trent, I, I really felt had been ha very harshly judged um, in his in his sort of personal life, and and it's quite often the case that those that have been, that have been you know really treated quite badly end up sort of doing the same thing as a kind of survival uh, tactic. Um, so I think that that's kind of where his judgmentalism has come from. But it's not you know it, it's not really not really where he's at. I don't think. Mm. No, 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 it's very fair, and I think. Um... We've talked about the really sort of funny, silly stuff you get to do on the show, but there's also a real heart to this show as well. And you, um, particularly the scenes with Trent and Colin this season mm. have been mm. like um, a real sort of where Trent goes from observing to supporting people within mm. the team. Uh, how did you approach those scenes and what? why were they important? 
Well, they're obviously really, really important because, you know, that fiction sometimes can tell the truth even a little, a little clearer than than kind of, you know, real life in a weird sort of way. And so, there's a lot of wonderful minds had gone into this storyline. Um, there, you know, lots of writers, Dylan Maron and obviously Jason and I mean uh, Brenda. I mean all of them. They they worked this out very. Uh, very kind of um, thoughtfully and my my um, opportunity was to obviously embody that um, that kind of uh, sort of uh, uh, oppression really you know I mean Trent's the old guard uh, uh, when it comes to Colin's situation and he's been in that situation many 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 times and and that sort of dual life is one that he knows incredibly well. Um, so what I wanted to do is uh, read as many case studies as I could, literally about the subject of homosexuality and being gay and queer and living in um, what it's like to live in a heteronormative world. Because one thing that hadn't really occurred to me was the world seemingly is um, hetero and if you're, if you're, you know, if if you're not that way inclined, you're sort of living in this sort of other world where you're the other, and that just struck me deeply. And I thought, what a nightmare! You know, this is ridiculous. This is, it's it's what I'm most excited about. This sort of scene is is the idea of like just, you know, it, us understanding this idea of what's normal, you know? Uh, uh, there isn't anything that's sort of abnormal about being gay or queer um, at all. Um, it couldn't be more normal. So, you know, it was, it, it, was a very, um, it was a very special moment to be able to kind of hold that space for this other character who's, who's you know, going through it. And he really, Trent really wants to know, you know, how do you do it? How do you do it in such a high profile situation? Um, it must be really hard and and uh yeah so it was it was a very special moment and and I, and I just read loads and loads and loads of um case studies there's a lot out there um particularly in um in a sport world where people are talking an anonymously and a, a lot of it's heartbreaking you know i mean i mean because at its worst when you oppress yourself in such a way or you know you can end up not wanting to be here not wanting to be on the planet because you don't feel that you fit in and um that's that's tragic so yeah, if anything can help that, then this is great. Trent's always been a keen observer and there's always been moments and beats where Trent has sort of, you've seen him just take stuff in. Did that change a bit those moments for you this season now that he's sort of writing a book and he's inside the world of Richmond? Was the way he was observing, did that sort of evolve or change a little bit? Um. Yeah, I think it did change in this. Well, I mean, he started off very keen to, uh, to, 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 you know, um, absorb as much information that he possibly could. But I think what would have changed is that inevitably by being around these, uh, these young guys, um, he sort of developed inevitably uh, friendships and warmth towards the the characters that they all are and there's such a, a such a range of different um characters in that locker room for instance you know from danny rojas to you know to the roy ken to um you know i mean all of them really um and and <clears throat> you know jamie tart so he becomes invested he just it's impossible to stay unbiased and he becomes invested and he really i think he really 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 wants them to win yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that was that, that that was the switch from um from when uh, trump was out in the uh, in the press room you know yeah 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 and that, that's a good point and like i think he's now like and i guess writing a book you maybe have the freedom to be less objective depends on the kind of book you're writing but i guess but um, yeah Something else that was exciting this year is you got to actually ask a question to Ted or Jason in the White House press briefing room. What was the experience? Like, how did that compare to doing it over at Richmond and the setting you've got there? Like, 
<laughs> well, I guess I had a good little run up, didn't I, with uh, yeah. doing it in uh, at Richmond over the last three seasons. So that, I was kind of used to standing up and, you know, announcing Trent Krim. Um, um, but what was, uh, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know what the word is. What it, it was, um, it was kind of frenetic in there. There, there was a really sort of uh, like it was like um, a sort of a chaotic classroom. And I was the new boy that had just stepped into the classroom. And it felt like all the kids, the journalists, were like throwing stuff at each other. They weren't. But when they saw, you know, Trent, they were like, hey, come sit here. Come, come sit here. You, you come, da, da, da. And, uh, and it was, it was kind of scrappy. And then I had Secret Service just sort of right behind me saying, you know, stay there, sir. And I was like, OK, right. And then some Apple people were saying, no, you got to go here. And, and I was just thinking, oh, man, I just really need to say my line without, you know, tripping up <laughs> so um yeah and it was all filmed live and uh, yeah it, but ultimately it was a buzz it was really cool I loved it <laughs> so when you go over like I guess when you're on the show it's like manufactured chaos and now you're going sure. into the organic chaos of a yeah. press room like where the stuff yeah. you guys are trying to create is just there happening yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely and i wasn't quite prepared for that i thought it'd be a lot more somber but it was a lot of fun in there they felt quite mischievous in in, in many ways <laughs> oh, <that's good>. um <laughs> what when you look back on your time at ted lasso i don't know if there's going to be more iterations and stuff i'm not going to ask you whether there is or not because i don't wonder, know yeah I mean, you wouldn't even it. know but Didn't i mean like either. they have talked about how this rounds out a three season story so just looking back on that experience what do you look back on most fondly i would say it's the it's um it's the connections with the the people on this show you know from the costume department makeup department camera i mean literally right away uh, along and and of course the cast like we have a really good time we have a good, really really good laugh and i will miss in particular um because uh, in season three obviously i was watching a lot of uh brilliant comedy at, at play like there's so many little storylines running around in that dressing room so that's sorry locker room you know like danny rojas um following zavra around like this sort of love struck puppy was one of my favorite things i mean my job was to go in and just observe that for instance and then you had all these other situations going on and then obviously the emotion with um colin and it was it was it was it was beautiful to be in that space and you know, I there's magic. There's magic on that set. There's magic. It really, there really is, and it, it it's gone out into the world, and and it's it's kind of um, you know, it, it's done that healing thing that I was sort of excited about in the first place. So yeah, it's wonderful. And I know you're a only a player fake. You you're a fake journalist, James. You're not a real journalist. But if you were to come up with a headline for the three seasons of Ted Lasso, what headline would you? would you write believe before you leave love it that's fantastic james <laughs> thanks so much for talking to us today it's always such a pleasure all the best of luck for the emmy awards you're now in the supporting race you've gotten the you've gotten the promotion so we'll see how that all goes and people watching this interview can go to goldderby.com james i appreciate your time so much thank you appreciate you thanks so much 